Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that can be a slightly unpopular truth in both strength circles and over in physique circles. Uh, but that is the fact that the overwhelming amount of evidence out there, both anecdotal and scientific, suggests that for advanced lifters, the overwhelming majority of your strength gains comes directly from hypertrophy. In other words, once you've learned how to perform a lift, once you've learned how to get neural adaptation in and you actually practice doing max lifts, in other words, this only applies to people who practice doing max lifts, pretty much all the strength that you gain, and by strength I mean one rep max strength because that is how strength is universally measured, even in the exercise science world, your, your personal definitions of strength are largely irrelevant. One rep max strength, it is a result of your hypertrophy. Okay. It is a result of your hypertrophy. And the bigger that a person is, the obvious the more strength potential they have if they actually go and train one rep maxes. Okay. And even people who are on different sides of the fence, people who are different experts who disagree with each other on every single other point agree on this. Okay. We've seen Greg Knuckles agree on this, that all of his data shows that, that even among power lifters, that Muscle mass relative to height is the biggest factor in determining their totals. Why? Because they already practice big lifts. Power lifters already know how to lift heavy. So the bigger they get, the stronger they get. You see, guys like Jamie Lewis have tried to point this out, looking at different people, that you have to do what he always calls like power building to be the strongest possible. The West Side guys have figured this out on the other end of the fence who promote conjugate that you have to do large amounts of hypertrophy work for your weakest muscles. Like you hit all your max work, and the max work's critical, and then whatever your weakest muscles are, you throw enormous amounts of volume at them, or as they even, they'll term it bodybuilding work, I don't think that's the correct term, but you throw large amounts of volume at it, and you will get stronger if your weakest muscles hypertrophy. All right, this is universally noted. If you haven't seen Dr. Mike Isretel has pointed out data, who promotes linear stuff that Guys usually get stronger on any sort of system of training that puts the most muscle mass on them. Their one rep maxes tend to go up sometimes more than peaking programs make them go up once they start practicing maxes again. So what is all of this suggesting? It's suggesting that for maximum strength, max effort work, meaning actually lifting heavy, combined with large amounts of training volume, give you the most strength and it's because volume training volume is one of the most critical components to continued muscle growth that's not true for the novice lifter the novice lifter it, that's not always the case novice lifters can get really strong and really jacked relative to where they started off doing stuff like fives they don't need a lot of volume they just need increased tension because there's a size and strength correlation directly from the training but the more advanced you get the more you have to focus on hypertrophy now, when you see bodybuilding types, you see to say, well, that's not true because bodybuilders are generally so jacked and they're not always strong for their size. Well, number one, most of them don't practice doing maxes, so they haven't actualized their potential. Number two, we know that when anabolics with bad training are the primary driver of your muscle growth, you get less strength per unit of muscle growth. They still gain strength from the muscle growth. It's just not proportionate to the amount of muscle they gain. But you need to be very, very, very clear on that. That even enhanced muscle growth, purely through the use of that with even fluff training, still increases strength. And I think what a lot of bodybuilding fans also forget is that bodybuilders aren't as big as you think they are relative to strength athletes either. Number one, they tend to be really lean and really short. They look big but maybe they're not carrying more lean mass in the right areas versus the guys you're comparing them to. Because a lot of times they're spending more time on show muscles and maybe things like their glutes, their hamstrings, their erectors, that stuff is neglected. So therefore they don't seem as strong as some power lifter who's really hypertrophied those areas. Number two, all the sight enhancement can make them look bigger than they are because they tend to sight enhance their show muscles. A 230-pound strength athlete who is 12% body fat might look smaller than a 230 pound power or bodybuilder who is 10% body fat 
and the bodybuilder will have bigger arms and delts because of the large amount of oil and scar tissue he's injected into there, combined with being slightly leaner. So he might look bigger, but the truth is he might actually have less total lean mass in the areas that matter the most for some of the big lifts. Because what you have to remember is that the strength is relative to the muscles involved. And if you've got major strength muscles that are neglected, like let's say your erectors are really weak, or your hamstrings are really weak, or your hips are really weak, you won't have the strength potential that, say, your quads give you the ability to have. So these are guys that if they had just brought up their neglected muscles, they would actually be dramatically stronger and if they practice doing maxes. But when everything else is factored in, the advanced lifter who already practices maxes, they're used to doing maxes, they do maxes, they don't gain much additional strength from anything other than pure hypertrophy. So what does this tell us? This tells us the advanced lifter has to tr focus on training volume. And they have to put the draining volume where it counts. When we say more training volume, I'm not telling you to do 20 sets of curls every week. I mean, you could. What I'm telling you is that the more advanced you get as a lifter, identifying your weakest links in all your big lifts, and it doesn't have to be just a squat bench and deadlift, it can be whatever big lifts you are training. Identifying your weak links and doing as much training volume as you can recover from from those weak links every week will give you the most strength gains. So to get as strong as possible, yes, you need to be working with really, really heavy poundages regularly. And that needs to be an important part of your program. And it has to be. To get maximally strong, you need to be maxing out regularly. But the greater portion of your training is actually going to need to be geared towards training volume. And your training volumes are probably going to need to be higher than they were as a novice or an intermediate. You're going to need a fair amount of training volume. And in fact, we could get over to the other point of we could talk about uh, minimum effective volume and things, and it's going to be much, much higher. The bigger you are, the higher your minimum effective volume is going to be to stimulate any muscle growth. So training volumes and loads are going to have to go up. You're going to have to train more. It's a different set of rules that apply. And that's one of the things I've tried to explain in the last year, that I've put out a lot of information in the past for more uh, early intermediates, late novices, early novices, that is still true to this day. They don't need a lot of training volume. But the more advanced that you get, the more your training volumes are going to have to go up to get stronger. And it's because to get stronger, you are going to have to get bigger. And you're going to have to continually get bigger. Now, it doesn't need to be in the same ratios and proportions you did as a noob. Because what you have to remember is that a noob sometimes puts 300 pounds on their deadlift in the first year. All right, They're putting 300 pounds of deadlift in the first year. For you to put another 300 pounds on your deadlift, you would probably need to gain the same amount of muscle that a noob gained. Well, that could be forever. You know, if, if you have a 400-pound deadlift to go from 400 to 700 pounds, you're going to have to gain a lot of muscle. You're going to have to gain as much muscle as a noob did who started with 100 pounds to get to 400. And that makes sense. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's the case of, yes, you're going to have to gain enormous amounts of muscle to put another 200 or 300 pounds on your deadlift. But it is doable, maybe, depending on what you have to work with on your frame. But the reality is, the more advanced you get, the more you're going to have to do higher and higher volumes of training. And the more you're going to have to work with, hey, am I picking the right training volume and the right load to put it in the right areas? to get me as strong as possible. You're going to have to learn to identify your weak links. Or your other option is to say, I'm just going to get as stacked as possible. Or it could be somewhere in between. You could say, well, I'm going to get as stacked as possible while putting a little bit extra focus on whatever my weakest links are. Now, that is probably the most viable solution. If a person wants to get as strong as possible natural, they're going to need to get as stacked as possible. That's what they're going to have to do. But 
there's still the strength continuum because what you have to remember is that you're still going to have to get stronger to get those workloads up. So it's really the combination of the two. But, but the truth is, as you get more and more advanced as a lifter, you're going to reach a threshold to where nearly every single pound that you add to a max on a big lift is going to have to come from your hypertrophy. You're going to have to get bigger. And people can deny that all they want, but the data suggests it, the anecdotes suggest it. Uh, no one who's really credible is in denial of that fact anymore. That's a bodybuilder type myth that is not based on reality. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.